Hello, everyone. I think now we are streaming live. And what an exciting moment it is. Sorry for the delay. Life happens. We need to allow it. <laughs> Otherwise, if we were striving for perfection, not many things would be able to happen. So um, I'm still very happy and excited to be able to introduce you, Sigrun, who stands behind my online business success. Because without Sigrun and her ideas and her passion, I would not be known as motivational language speaker, teacher and motivational speaker. And I would not be able to serve so many of you um, in my online business that I created solely due to help of Sigrun. So Sigrun, welcome. Thank you. thank you for the kind words and thank you for having me. So excited to be here. Yeah, everybody, sorry for the delay. Life happens. But here we are to, uh, you know, talk about Samba and how we could help you have your online business as a success. Yes, Sigrun, um, you have been running your online business since seven years now, January, seven years ago, I started uh, humble beginnings. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I did all the mistakes. And the biggest mistake I did was not to get help. But you know, you can always be wise afterwards. And then uh, talk about it so that other people don't follow that part of my journey. They can learn a lot from me, but not, please do not repeat my mistakes. So you are very passionate in motivating others to take action. Yes. And also to get help. You know, I, I was an accomplished business owner. I had been running businesses for 10 years. I had business education. I had been running a website agency, so I thought online business and website agency, that seemed close enough to me. So uh, I did a couple of online courses, like these short six, eight week courses where you learn a few things, but it's not really implemented in the course. They're, they're more trying to teach you what, but not like the how, like they don't go into the details of actually helping you. And Honestly, I was a bit lost. So uh, I, I, I call this phase now this spaghetti at the wall throwing phase. <laughs> That's a good name. And I think what you have experienced while trying to find your passion online, now you've learned on those mistakes. So it's so easy for you also to know what areas directly to target to help others. Absolutely. Um, I think, I think in the beginning, uh, a lot of women in particular, because I help women, uh, we are worried about not doing the right thing and therefore we don't get started at all. And uh, I spend a lot of time, that, that was before the seven years. So if you really wanna go back to the time where I thought about starting a business, that's a one and a half years before. Okay. So eight and a half years ago, I lost my job uh, and I realized when I lost my job because this was my second job loss in two years um, that I was uh, unemployable basically and I should not I should start my business but then I was like what should I do and instead of taking the most obvious choice I was thinking and thinking and thinking what it could be but I think it's important to add why you were unemployable at that point. Uh, unemployable, well, you know, I have four master's degrees, uh, 10 year CEO. It's very hard to find a job when you're highly qualified, very experienced. Um, I would apply for jobs where I thought well, I was perfect. They were looking for a CEO for a startup in Zurich. I did not even get an interview, not a single interview so valuable to share with such information because I think there are so many of us on different levels of experience, expertise, and people get rejected and they take it very personally. And rather than taking more action, it's so easy to draw back 
and hide and get into this depressive mode thinking, really, what's wrong with me? But luckily, I already had the idea of start my own business. So when I got all these rejections or I don't know, I didn't even get an answer. So it's hard to say if it was really a rejection. But yeah, I guess it's a rejection. You don't get a reply and no invitation to an interview. And uh, I wasn't so sad, to be honest. <laughs> it was more of a confirmation that I was thinking along the right lines of starting my own business. But then I was so worried about which step to take that I didn't take any steps. Mm. And uh, that's, that's the danger zone. Like uh, then you can really dig yourself a hole and it's hard to get out of that hole because you are so worried. Like the more you think about it, the more worried you get about taking the right step. And exactly because of this, uh, I, I have taken this into my teachings to not give people too much time to think. Because the more time you have to think about something, the more worried you are about what to do next and whether it's perfect. Uh, but the thing is, the action brings clarity. So it's better to do something, even if it's the wrong thing, than nothing. But the thing is, it's never wrong. We've mm -hmm. had people, I've worked with people who have maybe created courses and they're like, or created a course and like, ah, this wasn't exactly, you know, I figured out later that this wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. I'm like, great. Now you've just saved several years of your life wondering if this was the right thing to do, but you've got your answer in a couple of weeks. And people have been able to, you know, and it's not often that it happens, very rare actually, that people, you know, go after the wrong thing. But there is no wrong thing because you have then your answer. And it becomes a creation through elimination. Yes. And it's better to do something than nothing because that something is either the right thing, which probably in 90% of the cases is, is the right thing. And in 10% is not, I'm like, great. And I've done a lot of those presumably wrong things, but they have actually in hindsight been the best thing that I could have done. Yes, and I witnessed that uh, time and time again when I am behind the scenes uh, joining one of your courses and seeing other women who do exactly that. They try, they don't, well, this, this, this trying does not bring the expected results. There shows up uh, frustration and sometimes even anger, but that's the initial state. And then soon after that comes Come, uh, comes the reflection and understanding, okay, that doesn't work for that and that reason. And that exactly puts me on the right track, what can work instead. And we see it so many times that through this failure of not going the right direction that we think is right, we actually discover the right direction. We yeah. get put on track by action, by trying. But yeah. You have to do. Yeah. Doing is the answer. Uh, you cannot think your way to success. You cannot think your way to clarity. Clarity all, only comes from action. And it's going to be the right action or it's going to be the action. You know, we say wrong action, but it's going to be moving you forward in some shape or form. And I think it's very important to clarify what action actually is, because I notice um, that people very often make an excuse by joining a course, they justify it, I've just taken action, I am in this course, I paid for it, I invested in myself, I have taken action, and then actually they forget to take action to oh, take yeah. steps that the course Absolutely. is guiding them through. Yeah. And this is what my problem with most online courses and the courses that I participated in seven, eight years ago is they were very much, they gave you a satisfaction if you watched the videos and filled out the worksheets, then you felt like you had achieved something, but you had actually achieved nothing. There was no change. 
your business had not moved forward an inch. There was only this feeling of, I'm learning something new. Yes, I have new information in my head. I fill up the worksheets. Yes, it's sinking in. I understand what I learned, but there is nothing there. There's nothing tangible. And uh, so I completely shifted. I started this way myself. I started to teach online courses. Hey, here is thing. I didn't do many worksheets because I also realized the worksheet is not, that's not the way to build a business. You have to take what you learned in the video lesson and actually implement it. And uh, I waited one and a half years and then I wasn't seeing enough success with my clients. I had been running Samba, the, the old version of Samba, as I call it now. And uh, I had created all this amazing content. We had weekly Q&A, hot seat calls, master classes, the whole shebang, what you are supposedly should have in a great program. And still I was only seeing a portion of my students having success. And I say, you know, there's always going to be 10% people that have success and no matter what they do or no matter what online course they buy, they're going to have success. It's the ambitious people, action, super action takers. They're always going to be successful. 10%. There's always going to be 10% that do not do anything. They buy stuff and they do not do anything. So we cannot help those people. You just have to accept that. It's the 10%. It's the 80% in the middle. Are you helping them? Mm. And I realized I was not. And it's, it's a horrible feeling when you have created something, you know, with your love and passion and all the knowledge and experience I had. And I realized the 80% were not using it to the fullest potential. I, I grabbed some of them, but I was like, I am not doing a proper job. I've taken these people's money. I've given them all my content. But that's not what they need. They need something else. And that's where I came up with Samba Kickstart, the process. Uh, first, it was just like, a, you know, I don't know. Let's just do this challenge. I never had plans to actually sell this as a program. But it went so well, 2018, repeated it 2019. And then people are asking, like, can I buy this? Can I just get that? And I'm like, I guess so. So in September 2019, we changed course and now we have fully, uh, you know, implemented the chains. The old Samba is a separate program, which is perfect for people who have done Kickstart already and want to continue get some support. But Kickstart is now a 10 week and I call it a group coaching intensive because it's not an online course. It's not the one you watch videos and fill out worksheets and then you think you are done. You, you actually have very distilled content. It's, uh, I, I do the videos as short as possible uh, so that you have maximum amount of time to implement what you learn. And every week you are implementing, implementing, and we check, we have accountability forms to check where people are in the program to make sure they're making progress. We chase people, we go to their homes. No, we don't. <laughs> uh, Yes, but you know, this is where I started to see 90% have success and 10% <clears throat> they are still not having success, but you know, that's just life. And it's no longer the eager people, the elite students that are always going to be superstar. It's the broad band. It's the regular person that decides they want to have an online business. They're going to have success with this process. And I think it's it's really amazing approach that really makes the difference. And many people can get disheartened buying yet another online program if they have already had experience with the programs that actually don't care, mm -hmm. don't have that accountability bit. Yeah. And that's what I really love about Kickstart, this accountability. We really feel like a part of something bigger. We really feel pushed, but in a very productive way. We really feel heard, noticed, and supported in that program. I myself took part in it twice already. And yeah. each time I created a, a beautiful um, online course that I still use with my clients. Um, but I also took part in other programs not created by you. 
and I can feel the difference and I can see that we can fall into that trap and a conclusion, online programs are not for me, nobody cares. And that's why, that's why I like to, to spread the news about your programs, because especially Somba Kickstart that helps those newbies, those people who have a drive, who have a dream, some vision, don't really know where to start. That's very vulnerable time as well, because it's the time when it's so easy to give up, not to go further. Yeah, well, the most important time to take action is when you are starting to see the signs to take action. Uh, we have people like, oh, when do you run it the next time? I'm like, later means never. <laughs> uh, and it's just proven. Like, you know, the fitness studio is, is a great choice tomorrow. And then tomorrow you say tomorrow. And then the day after that, you say tomorrow again. And the same with ideas. Uh, there's a great saying one of the books that I read. I'm not sure which one it was. I think it was Elizabeth Gilbert. Ideas have shelf life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's almost like, you know, you buy milk yes, and you put it in the fridge. And even if you put it in the fridge, which is a better place than putting it on your countertop on your kitchen. But after seven days, the milk is probably not good. And the same with ideas and same with the idea of, of, of going after your online business. If you don't do it in the moment of inspiration where you feel called to do it, it is unlikely that you're going to do it six months later. Or within those six times, you can find someone having used the same idea, but actually implementing it in real life. And you are sitting uh, there. So yeah, <laughs> that was in the book too. Uh, she actually said, no, she probably didn't say the shelf life. She said ideas are like a butterfly. They come on your shoulder and there is this, you know, idea knocking on your shoulder and telling you, hey, here's an idea. Uh, and then you don't do anything with it. And then the idea flies over to Kasia and yes. says, Kasia, here's an idea for you. And you, okay, I'll do it. That's exactly what happens. The inspiration comes for a reason. Grab it. Yeah. Sigrun. Mm, you are famous for, for those people who are following you, you're famous for supporting women, but are your courses only for women? No, we uh, have a few men, not many, but we have the good ones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the friendly ones. Uh, yeah, we have men, but of course, you know, my, my purpose in life is to accelerate gender equality. So it's kind of weird to, to speak to men at the same time, but of course they are welcome. And if they like uh, to be in a crowd full of women and are okay with me wearing red all the time, <laughs> uh, you know, and all the things that we stand for, then they are surely welcome to join. Wonderful. And I have met um, some of them as well. It's, it's, it's a nice variety to our groups having the ma masculine energy. But it it's it's uh, it's also I think what what is also um, incredible in your programs that you create through your programs a very passionate community, passionate in terms of changing our lives, changing lives of our clients, changing lives of our families, friends. Obviously, through taking action, but but. Um, what I like in that community is that all of a sudden we feel that we are supported, not only energetically, but mm -hmm. also we can exchange our frustrations, our pain points, our joys, our successes, and we feel understood mm -hmm. because it's, it becomes a community of people who, who have a very similar goal. We might have completely different business ideas, but we have one goal of creating something that will be serving our clients even more and that that will be serving the clients that we don't have yet maybe even when we just start but we have that vision of helping someone and and i find it really fascinating how much energy there is in such a community once we go behind the door yeah yeah, it's completely different. It's hard to explain because we cannot really show the energy, you know, uh, it's a private Facebook group, but 
just seeing the introductions of our new round of Kickstarters is, you know, warms my heart. And I know all the coaches and mentors are all like, oh, I'm going to be working with these amazing women. You know, they're highly educated, very experienced, uh, accomplished women who have had success in their life, but now they're doing online business and it's tricky. Uh, but I would also say, you know, building an online business, especially when you build it from a personal brand, which most of the people are doing, not everyone, but most people are building a personal brand, which means you are appearing with your name and you are having, even if it's not a personal brand, you know, I have friends that have a company but they are the face of the company. So you need to be, you know, doing videos, uh, podcasting or whatever you do to, to put out content. And it becomes the biggest personal development journey you go on in your life. You might be, you know, 40, 50, 60, and you have not experienced anything like this before. And that's where you also need the support because it's hard to suddenly be vulnerable, realize that, you haven't, this is a new level for you that you have not had to <laughs> tackle before and be a part of a community where you get the support and people understand how hard it is to do a live video, to do your first webinar, to, to uh, you know, publish your first blog post or whatever it is. It's just because it's new. Yeah. Right. It becomes challenging. And that's where, when it becomes challenging for our mindset because it's something new. And like you said, many of, of women who join the program or men, they are already successful. They are already established. They are already experts in their zones. But then once they have to create for the first time an online course, it becomes a challenge in itself because it's something new. Yeah. Something new. And uh, we, we have, of course, in our lives, all of us done something new. Uh, we learn to ride a bike, we learn to drive a car, we come into a new company as a new employee. It's scary. But this thing about online business, uh, you know, I know it, it's myself. I have no problem being in a webinar with 10,000 people and then going live on my personal Facebook profile. Oh, that is a completely different thing. I, I try to even forget that I'm live there. I'm like, oh, I'm live over here. Uh, I'm, yeah. Uh, because it's your friends and family suddenly see what you're doing. And that feels a bit scary. And, and people will even email us. We're getting emails this week. Like, do I have to, you know, da, 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 use my private profile? I'm like, there is no distinction between private and business anymore. Mm. And welcome to this new world. And you got to get used to it and you can get used to it and you will get the support and everyone is going through the same where they feel a bit like, ah, I don't really want to tell people over here what I'm doing. You'll get over it. <laughs> yeah. And, and only action helps us get over it. Yes. That's where we, we go back to the, to the start of today's um, conversation. You know, we talk about all that support that we are getting when we join Kickstart or other of your programs. But how about you, uh, you personally, how do you react to challenges? Who, where do you find support for yourself? Who supports you? Well, I have my husband, who is my biggest supporter, also my biggest critic. If he <laughs> thinks I could do something better, he is not holding back, very direct, just like myself with my clients. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess I've just, gotten support in my closest environment. Actually, yesterday, my mother was giving me an envelope. I was like, what is in this envelope? She is 75. Um, and my dad is sick, unfortunately, uh, has cancer. Uh, he's, he's doing okay right now. But you know, we know that um, this is a tricky situation. Mm. My mom now has decided to clean everything up so that I would not have, you know, it's a horrible idea that your mm. parents will at some point no longer be on this earth, but she's cleaning things up. So she's giving me some old stuff. She gave me an envelope with, um, with letters that I had sent her from my studies. Mm. And it was not letters because I had a, we, we got a fax machine. So they had a fax machine already from their business. And I bought a fax machine because, you know, letters, I was not gonna wait. So basically we were emailing 
over fax. Yeah. Um, I would, I don't remember this, but I would send her, hi mama, I'm working on this project in architecture. I don't really know who to ask. Can you tell me, you know, what you think about this and this idea? And there was whole drawings and there was like, you know, a page after page after page. So I guess I know, you know, I turned to my parents, I turned to my uh, husband. My sister is also an online business, completely different business, uh, smaller business. Uh, but I have, I'm lucky to have in my close environment, uh, uh, people who support me and believe in what I do. But I also have always made sure that I'm in a paid program. Mm. From, from, from the time that I realized I wasn't getting the help that I needed, since then I've been in paid programs. And I've always, you know, stepped up and grown with these communities. And uh, just, you know, I'm in the middle of uh, my biggest launch ever. And even though it's going super well, of course, I go into my mastermind group and say, hey, what else could I do? I'm doing this and this and that. Then this is my biggest launch ever. But, you know, what else could I do? And they come up with some ideas and I use some of them and some not. So, yeah, I, I make sure both on my family side, friends, I would say not so much like close friends, childhood friends. I don't turn to them for support in this area. But yeah, then mastermind bodies. And then I have you know, I had coaches in the past who are now my, now my friends, you know, uh, I have actually called with one of them today. So I, I, I get support, you know, depending on where I feel I am um, from people around me. And you also seek support by choosing, for example, mentors or groups of people that can stimulate you in this specific area. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I do not go to my parents or my husband, like, uh, what other launch tactics can I use? Then I go to my mastermind. So I, I'll pick, I'll pick uh, who I go to for support, but I, I do have great support. And, uh, but you know, you can always step it up and every new level is a new devil. And you need to make sure that you surround yourself with people who pull you up and don't push you down. Exactly. And, and there are people like that, meaning the ones who will pull you up. It's just a matter of choosing it and, and being wiser when we see that someone is really pulling us back to say, okay, stop, I break that tie and I want to I wanna work with someone else. I want to I wanna be surrounded by people who actually elevate me and not pull me down. And that's what I like in one of your programs that I am a part of, of Momentum. That's where a lot of inspiration comes and actually this push, this like, you think you can't? Come on, try it. And then you yeah. be like, okay, I'll try it. <laughs> I also have noticed throughout the years of working with you that um, not only are you talking about female um, equality and, and, um, and, empowering women but you also have no problem talking about money it's a topic that you take lightly you very often talk about your own wins your launches in financial terms something that many entrepreneurs are trying to hide for different reasons uh, have you also always uh, found it easy to talk about money or was it also a part of a mindset that needed some shifting Mm -hmm. uh, well, my parents ran their own business. It was a small business. It was a dry cleaning, but they had, I guess, six to eight employees. Um, so I think money wasn't something to hide, but still in front of us, I never knew what my parents earned. I didn't know how much the business made, but we were in business. So you know, I would be at the cashier and, you know, to collect the money from the customers. So I don't think I was ever shy about money, but of course, talking publicly about how much you earn, like I do now in my business is something that I just started with this business. Um, and I think, I think it was actually one of the first emails that really got success. Like I was in my first launch 
finally got the help I needed and did my first launch in uh, September 2014 after nine months throwing spaghetti at the wall. <laughs> and uh, my launch wasn't actually going so well. Uh, I sold one spot, refunded the person and, and, and shifted over to selling coaching packages. And uh, I sent out this email and I think it was my coach at the time that gave me this idea of, I don't know, I'm not so sure anymore. But I wrote all the things I had achieved. Like, even though I was only nine months in business and I hadn't made a lot of money, I decided to write down because I, I, I don't know, I just felt this was what people needed to hear. Like January, 30 people on my email list. February, uh, 150. Da, 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 da. And September was 1,500. Whoa. And then I added the revenue numbers too. Hmm. They were not big. But the audience that was following me, they were impressed and they booked the call with me and I was fully booked and made $55,000 over the next three months. Perseverance and action. Well, sharing the numbers. I think that was the kind of the shift. Like they were all following me. They were watching my Canva webinar, my MailChimp webinar. I hadn't really been talking about you know, how do you make money? How do you build your email list in specific terms? And there I just shared, hey, here's what I have achieved in the last nine months. Do you want my help? Yeah, and they so, okay, I want to get help from that lady. Yes, and then I realized being transparent about your numbers is that it's helping me and uh, helping me get clients. But not just that, I would get emails from women who said, Sigrun, I printed out your email. And I'm like, they're printing out my email. So then I started to share this more because I realized it wasn't just about me getting clients because of course I'm in business <laughs> and you know, I need to make money. I'm running a company, I have employees and all of that, but I was inspiring women. They were using my email. So, and then I started to, uh, not right away, but uh, a couple of years ago, I started to write like end of year email where I, I, I list down the things that I did this year and how my email list has grown and, 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 and how I've made my money with which launches and that. And women write back and say, this is so inspiring to see. Also the whole journey, because my first email is always about my first year in business. And then I have email two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they see the journey, you know, and it becomes, it comes real. Like, it is not overnight success. I did a lot of mistakes and now I'm trying to help women not make these mistakes and shortcut it. I say that it took me 27 months to get to 10K months. And now we have in Samba Kickstart 10 weeks to 10K. Yes, it, the, the, the change is tremendous, but it's also due to your example. Women start understanding anything is possible. Yeah. And I think what, what happens behind the doors is that we see, very often we hear women saying, if she can, I can. And it's not only referring to you, but also to that Somba Kickstart, that Somba Kickstart, that Somba Kickstart. We, 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 we start feeling that this is not just for the chosen ones. This is not just for the ones with many degrees. This is, this is for you and I, this is for us. This is for living women who have passion, drive, dreams. And, and I think that's what also makes a huge difference, makes this program unique, price, very priceful, valuable, because, because it's, um, it is designed for you and me, like very normal women, right? Yeah. And now doors are closing tomorrow, 10 p.m. Central European time. And it's time to take a decision. And there are already a bonus, Kasia. Do you have a bonus? I have a bonus. My bonus for, for people who are joining today, uh, I want to offer a private uh, mindset coaching session. Mm -hmm. with, um, and I know how how important our mindset is. And I know that we very often become our own worst enemies on the path of success, on the path of, of growth. So I'm here to help you on those initial stages 
During those 10 weeks, you can use the, the private session with me during the kickstart creation, because I know that I myself needed a kick and needed someone to, to shape, reshape my mindset and say, hey, listen, you can do it. I believe in you. So, so I'm here to, to support you as well, if, you, if you're uh, willing to join today. Um, the, the, the last time I checked, there have been over 222 ladies who've already joined yes. in this one. And I believe that numbers are still growing. Yes. Uh, yeah, we have uh, 222. That was yesterday. We're, well, we're further today. Uh, we are looking at, I think, over 300 uh, new SOMPAs. We have additional... Uh, I think additional 100 will join us from uh, existing programs. So if people are a part of Momentum or Samba membership, they get free access to Kickstart. That's uh, one of the perks to be in our other programs. Uh, you can repeat Kickstart. And, and I've gotten requests like, why do you repeat it? They think there's something wrong. And I'm like, no, it's because it's so much fun. Exactly. So uh, we have to address that because people think like, why is someone repeating this? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, um, this is actually the great bonus for other programs because we see so much value in this kickstart that we don't want to take part in it only once. We have a new idea. We want to create another course. And this is the, the quickest and most effective way to do it. And when you do it in a group, you feel that vibe. And especially when your idea is completely new and you are a bit fearful. Will it work? Will it not? Will I find people? Will I not? Will anybody join? The kickstart really helps alleviate the pain and helps you stay focused and structured. So Absolutely. that's why we, we rejoin and I personally also do. Yeah. 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 We have a lot of people repeat because they love it. They are exploring maybe a new course idea. Some people are shifting. Maybe they're adding another language. You know, people are shifting from one language to another language. I just answered the email earlier today about that. Someone was saying, oh, I want to start an English speaking business. I'm like, Kickstart is perfect. Or like in your case, you know, uh, maybe I want to explore the, the motivation uh, mindset area and then I create a new course on that. But also people who are continuing on the same path, but they realize they want to create another course. Yeah. And uh, so that's just uh, proving the value of the program that people actually want to come back. It's the energy, it's the execution and the results that they receive from it. And excitement behind it. Yeah. Sikrun, um, to finalize this beautiful conversation with you today, I would like to ask, what is your biggest drive behind your success? I have, I'm on a mission to accelerate gender equality and whatever I can do. Uh, well, let's say I found my path. I don't want to be a politician. I don't want to, you know, run from house to house and, and, and convince someone to pay women equal salaries or whatever. I, I just was looking for my path and I found it. My path is to help women start, build and scale businesses. I want women to think bigger I want women to not think small anymore and just have tiny businesses and hobby businesses, but real businesses that make real money because only when women take action and take responsibility for making their own money and creating assets, then we're going to get closer to gender equality. It's, it's not going to happen in my lifetime, but whatever I can do, I will do. And I'm doing it through this vehicle of online business because I find online business the easiest way to start and scale a business. It's wonderful. I'm super happy that we could meet today, that uh, other people can meet you, other women can meet you. And um, thank you. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for sharing with your passion. Thank you for having me. Sigrun. All the best with the Kickstart launch and uh, we see each other yeah. soon. Yeah, see you in Samba Kickstart. Bye. Bye.